Viewing life as a game is the most useful mental map I've found for being able to live your best life. Viewing life as a game not only makes life a lot more fun, but it gives you tremendous insight into the human condition. And within the metagame of life, we all play these mini games, each with their own rules, levels, rewards, and punishments. The money game, the fame game, the women game, the power game, the status game, the recognition game, the love game, and on and on. And within all those games are even smaller games we play with each other to get those res results. Every person on the planet is gaming each other all the way down to little children crying and throwing a tantrum when they aren't allowed to have ice cream for dinner. With the desired end result for all our games being to maximize pleasure and minimize pain. Unfortunately, many of our games end badly, oftentimes with the opposite result of maximizing pain. Because some people still play child's games as adults crying, screaming, or threatening when they don't get their way. People play bad games not because they want to be miserable. Being miserable is just the end result. They play bad games because of lack of self-awareness, lack of understanding of what motivates other people, being blind to the negative patterns and games you're running, not knowing how to get what you want in a positive, constructive way, not being able to create win-win scenarios for other people, or a combination of all the above. People who consistently play bad games are toxic people hurting themselves and hurting others in a misguided attempt at happiness. People who play good games are happy, positive people who live fulfilling lives and uplift other people around them. So here's how to play good games. Good games in a sentence are games you play with your friends, family, clients, and girlfriend or girlfriends where the game, the end game is maximum happiness and win-win scenarios for you and your people. In life, he who has the most joy wins, so it only makes sense to play for maximum joy. Here are some great games to play with other people. Number one is mutual value escalation. The goal of mutual value escalation is to move through life with your people, helping each other to do better, be better, and lifting each other up when you fall. Helping yourself and your people maximize their health, wealth, relationships, and lifestyle. Another name for the game could be, I'm great, you're great, so let's help each other be our best selves. Mutual value escalation comes from a place of seeing yourself as your best self, seeing other people as their best selves, and encouraging them to fulfill their potential. And I'll tell you, seeing someone as their best self is incredibly powerful in regards to relating to people, especially if you're the first person in their lives to recognize their potential, see them as their best selves, and support their goals to be able to achieve those outcomes. The rules to the game are stay positive, supportive, give good advice when asked, and occasionally give unsolic unsolicited advice when you think that your friend or your girlfriend is making a major mistake. Ultimately, it's about seeing your people as the best versions of themselves and supporting and encouraging them to be that person. When not play played properly, it turns into a game of value de-escalation where you're telling that person they're no good, they're telling you the same, you're moving downwards, they're moving downwards, which is not where you want to be. Good game number two, us versus them. Us versus them might sound like a bad game at first. It definitely can be depending on who's playing and what the goals are, but it can also be a great game when you play it ethically because the reality is at least half of life is competition. Competition for money, resources, women, clients, customers, housing, status, and all the thousands of other things that people are playing for and competing for. But life becomes a lot more fun when you have people to help you compete. For me, having a group of guys who can not only support me in my life goals, but offer valuable business advice, introduce me to women, makes me more competitive in terms of getting what I want in this world. The same logic applies to building your company. You want people on your team who are committed to helping you make money, get more clients, more revenue, more traffic, or whatever else you need to compete, and vice versa. You are helping them compete in the game of life by giving them revenue and income. Us versus them also applies to romantic relationships. 
Because at the end of the day, there are very few people who will be, who will be loyal to you when you're down. And a large part of being in a relationship is to have someone in your corner where you're not just taking on the world by yourself, but you've got a partner in crime to help you achieve your goals and to support you when you're feeling down. Us versus them is like mutual value escalation, but projected outward into the competition of life. When you work as a team to help each other win and help each other compete ethically. And if someone is being unethical to your people, you help your people throw stones at their enemies, not necessarily in the literal sense, but at the end of the day, you have each other's backs. Every successful organization, government, nation, or enterprise plays us versus them. Because as humans, we are tribal creatures, and it is a necessity for you to succeed at any type of level to have people on your team to help you compete. And as long as it's ethical and you're competing ethically and respectfully, then you are playing a good game. However, us versus them can also go badly, and it goes badly in two ways. Number one is ethical failure. You can see this in nations when they attack a neighbor in a war of aggression for resources and territory. Uh, you can see it in, in, in companies um, acting unethically in their business practices. You can see it in gangs who, whose entire modus operandi is, is unethical. And number two is infighting, where instead of cooperating with your team, you start to compete within your team. And us versus them becomes us versus us. This is how companies implode. This is how friendships end. And this is how divorce starts. Game number three, recognition and appreciation. The recognition and appreciation game is a great game to play because it's so easy to play. It costs you nothing to do. It makes other people happy and almost no one else does it. The rules are simple. Recognize people for doing things for you and show them your appreciation. Most people, though, are too hungry for their own recognition to give it to others, or they don't really listen to other people, and it doesn't occur to them to appreciate the other person or the people around them in their lives. Ironically, though, the more you appreciate other people, the more they tend to appreciate you. In fact, you could say that the recognition and appreciation game is the entire basis behind Dale Carnegie's classic How to Win Friends and Influence People, which is hands down the best book on navigating interpersonal relationships. Most people, though, can only think of getting recognized for their own ideas instead of recognizing others, which is why that book is so powerful. The recognition and appreciation game is also incredibly important in business. Recognizing and appreciating your clients, customers, and supporters is extremely important in terms of being able to make more money, in terms of being able to keep the clients, customers that you already have, and in terms of being able to expand your brand through word of mouth and referrals. Recognition and appreciation is a game I play every single day in the comments section of my videos and articles to show that I appreciate whatever support that my readers and viewers give me. Failure to play the recognition and appreciation game often lead, leads to resentment, especially in romantic relationships. In fact, not being appreciated is probably the number one complaint from women about men, which can lead to women playing the I do so much for you game and you don't appreciate it, which leads to you getting your back up and playing the game. I'm not a mind reader. How am I supposed to know that you are upset or that you expected that from me or does everything you give me come with strings attached? And I guarantee you've been in that argument at least once with your mom growing up, with, with girlfriends. And the recognition and appreciation game is one way to proactively avoid those types of bad games. Game number four. Let's have fun. Let's have fun is probably my favorite game. Um, Underneath my dedication to my mission and my go-getter attitude, I'm basically a 12-year-old who only wants to do things that are fun. I hate going to the dentist. I hate doing chores. I hate seeing distant relatives or any of the other adult things that most people my age spend their life doing. It's part of why I took such a radical turn in my life so I could set up my life 
to where I do the minimum amount of things that I don't want to, as opposed to the guys that I used to work with in corporate Canada who had to do something they didn't want to do every day of the week on top of a job they already hated. Ultimately, adult life doesn't have to be boring, and you don't have to do chores when you make enough money to pay other people to do them for you. So whenever I sit down with my friends, family, or girlfriend, girl or girlfriends, I want to have fun. And that means jokes, impressions, funny movies, family guys, stand-up comedy, dancing, drinking, sex, whatever it is. Free time for me is either fun time or if it's not going to be fun, then I'd rather be reading and learning and improving myself and gathering ideas for my next article, video, or course. And outside of time, that's free time. I'm working on my business or going to the gym or eating. So within my free time, I'm always thinking about what's fun, how do we have fun, and trying to bring a playful attitude to the people around me. If it's a girl I'm dating and we're chilling at my place, I'm not above tickling, play fighting, teasing, doing a, a silly dance, or just giving her something, putting it in her hand, only to snatch it back at the last minute, basically being eight years old. When you keep it playful, you make other people feel the same way, you have a sort of a lightness of step, and you know the world becomes more fun for you and for the people around you.